So this lecture is called Healing the Heart. And we talked about physical and emotional and spiritual in the last lecture somewhat. And um, so I want to look at a few promises that God made. One of them is Deuteronomy 7 verse 15. And the Lord will take away from thee, how, many, how much sickness? All. All sickness. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. That's a promise from God. And God gave the health message to this church because he doesn't want you to end up like that. Because God is love. He gave information about what to eat and what not to eat, what to do and what not to do for your sake and mine. Because God is love. In fact, the Lord made a promise in Exodus 15, verse 26. He said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. You know, Egypt, we know, is a very powerful nation. In fact, uh, you've all heard of the King Tutankhamun find, which is one of the richest finds of gold ever in the history of the world that we know of. Um, they were very wealthy. In fact, the King Tut exhibit came to Los Angeles in 1975, I believe it was, for the first time. And I was privileged to be among the first group to witness, first group of Americans to ever lay eyes on that. It was absolutely astounding. I won an essay contest in junior high school and I was among several students in California that was privileged to go for free. And so it was really amazing. But you know, aside from the treasures and the, the golden mask and the sarcophagus and the, the golden statues that were five feet high, solid gold, and there were Egyptian guards standing around with machine guns looking at everybody and making sure nobody's going to try to steal the treasures of Egypt, which came from Cairo. <clears throat> during that time, you know, God says that if we will obey His commandments and His statutes and do them, that God will keep us from the diseases of the Egyptians. Well, what is that? Did you ever ask that question? What is the diseases of Egypt? Well, there were some scientists and doctors that wanted to find out. And so they, they took one of the mummies that was like 3,500 years old. And rather than ruin it and unwrap the thing, they put it into an MRI and a CT scan and they wanted to find out what was the cause of death. And this is what they found. This is taken from the Journal of American Medicine, uh, November 18, 2009. It says, hardening of the arteries has been detected in Egyptian mummies, some as old as 3,500 years, suggesting that the factors causing heart attack and stroke are not only modern ones, they afflicted ancient people too. So what did they have? They had heart disease. They had heart attacks, they had strokes. That's how they died. And then this slide says, the nameplate of the Pharaoh Merimtha, 1213 to 1203 BC, in the Museum of Egyptian Antiquities, reads that when he died at approximately age 60, he was afflicted with atherosclerosis, you know, that clogging of the arteries, all that fat and cholesterol, you know, arthritis and dental decay, taken from ScienceDaily.com, a report on the findings of UC Irvine clinical professor of cardiology, Dr. Gregory Thomas, a co-principal investigator on the study. So this is what they found. They were dying from the same diseases that we're dying from today. And what was the diet of the Egyptians? Uh, the flesh pots of Egypt. Remember that? In the book of Numbers, chapter 11, you know, God brought the Israelites out and... Uh, and, and God was raining manna from heaven, and then they complained to Moses, and they said, we don't want this pancake stuff, or whatever, you know, this bread from heaven. We want those barbecues we had back in Egypt. And so they cried to the Lord. And the Bible says they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust, because they believed not in God and trusted not in His 
salvation, they were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. Psalm 78, verse 18, 22, and 30 to 31. Read the whole chapter. It's astounding. So God said, okay, you don't want to eat what I want to give you and what's best for your health, so I'll give you what you want, but it's not going to be good for you, but here you go. And he rained quail three feet deep as far as the eye could see, a day's journey this way, a day's journey that way. And they stayed up all that night and all that day. In fact, it was the largest barbecue ever recorded in history. And it's recorded in the book of Numbers chapter 11. And they were so excited. Oh, praise the Lord. We have the no. And what happened? They died. Thousands died. They just dropped dead. Heart attack, stroke. Just like that. Because of rebellion. Those who use flesh meat disregard all the warnings that God, who? That God has given concerning this question. They have no evidence that they are walking in safe paths. They have not the slightest excuse for eating the flesh of dead animals. You know, people use the Bible and say, well, but the Bible says you can eat. Well, what about the other parts of the Bible? What does that say? Uh, see? You know, let's go further down in history. Let's go down to the book of Daniel. Let's go down to the book of Revelation. Are we eating flesh in heaven? No. no. When are we supposed to prepare for heaven? No. Now. God's curse is resting upon the animal creation. Many times when meat is eaten, it decays in the stomach and creates what? Disease. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to, we're going to talk about disease and reversing disease. Rheumatoid arthritis, high blood pressure, lupus, okay? Cancers, tumors, and pulmonary diseases are largely caused by meat eating. Councils on Diet and Foods 383. What does the Bible say? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God. What's the first angel's message? Fear God and do what? Give glory to him, right? For the hour of his judgment will come? No, is come. Right? How do we glorify God? What does it say? And glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It is a mistake. People say, oh, well, where are you going get to your, get your protein? And, you know, we ask that question in a country where protein deficiency doesn't even exist. Have you ever seen protein deficiency in the United States? I never have. It is a mistake to suppose that muscular strength depends on the use of animal food. The needs of the system can be better supplied and more vigorous health can be enjoyed without its use. The grains with fruits, nuts, and vegetables contain all the nutritive properties necessary to make good blood. These elements are not so well or so fully supplied by a flesh diet. Had the use of flesh been essential to health and strength, animal food would have been included in the diet appointed man in the beginning. Child Guidance, page 384. How many of you have ever heard of this video, this movie called The Game Changers? It's a documentary. And it was on Netflix for some time, and I think they changed it to some other thing, you know, or whatever. Is it there? Okay. Game Changers. If you have Netflix, you need to watch this. It's really good. And it's about professional athletes that changed from a meat-eating diet, including bodybuilders, and went to a vegan, plant-based diet. And their athletic abilities increased exponentially. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in that video. He was an amazing bodybuilder. And he says, Yo, you know, we were taught that you got to eat meat, you got to, you know, meat and everything. He said, that is all not true. Of course, he used other words, but anyways... All right, and we have been taught from, from uh, uh, grade school, junior high school, high school, college, university, that this is the food pyramid. This is what you need to eat in order to have good health, right? Isn't that what we were taught? Recognize that, right? Oh, you know, you got to have your dairy products and, and you need to eat the fish and, and then you got your grains and your fruits and veggie, veggies and a little bit of oil and stuff. 
And we were taught that you need to drink your milk. My mom, my mom used to put a glass of milk on the table. Now, James, you need to drink your milk. I said, okay, mom, and I drink my milk. I had urinary tract infections, kidney infections, uh, vomiting, stomach cramps, uh, flus, all kinds of health problems growing up. I was on all kinds of antibiotics and drugs, you know. And we didn't have a clue that maybe this was causing the problem. It was. Remember, milk is designed to grow a 900-pound beast. You know, cow's milk contains 59 growth hormones, one of which is insulin growth factor 1. IGF-1 is a key factor in the growth of cancer cells. Each bite of hard cheese has 10 times whatever was in that sip of milk because it takes 10 pounds of milk to make one pound of cheese. Each bite of ice cream, how many of you like ice cream? Don't be shy, come on, raise your hand. Everybody, I love ice cream, but we make vegan ice cream. We freeze bananas and run it through a grinder and it comes out soft serve ice cream. We put blueberries and strawberries and we can enjoy all that plant-based. We don't need to eat milk. Every swipe of butter has 21 times whatever is contained in the fat molecules in a sip of milk. This is taken from rents.com website. There are 65 medical studies that are listed as documentation about this. All right. So here's a brief list of the disorders caused by the unnatural consumption of cow's milk and dairy by human beings. Gastrointestinal canker sores, vomiting, colic, stomach cramps, abdominal distension, intestinal obstruction, bloody stools, colitis, malabsorption, loss of appetite, growth retardation, diarrhea, constipation, painful defecation, irritation of the tongue, lips, and mouth, respiratory nasal stuffiness, runny nose, inner ear trouble, sinusitis, asthma, Pulmonary infiltrates, skin rashes, atopic dermatitis, eczema, seborrhea, hives, behavioral irritability. Does it affect your character? Restlessness, hyperactivity, headache, lethargy, fatigue, allergies, anemia in adults, and mental depression taken from nine medical studies found at organichealthandbeauty.com website. So, is milk healthy for you? No. It's healthy for cows, though. That's why it's called cow's milk. What's in a glass of milk? 135 million pus cells, blood, feces, up to 20 painkillers, antibiotics, and growth hormones, bacteria and pathogens, IGF-1, which we talked about, which is, contributes to increased diabetes risk, hormonal imbalance, immune system damage, early puberty in children, cancer, acidic protein, which leaches minerals and calcium from the bones. Why? Because it's so high in protein that in order for the body to buffer that through and flush it out through the kidneys, it has to take calcium out of your bones and then you can urinate it out. And by the way, we have most, we consume the more dairy products than any country on planet Earth, yet we have the most osteoporosis than any other country. Why? Because of the dairy products. And by the way, did you know that the food pyramid was bought and paid for by the Meat and Dairy Council? who paid the senators to make it a law that they have to put that in textbooks. Did you know that? Yeah, research the origin of that. It's all over the place. It's all about money and business. It's not about health. Toxic milk protein, casein, which contributes to breast cancer, kidney disease, arthritis, MS, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and asthma, just to name a few. Here's a, a nice filter from a milk factory where they... Uh, filter the milk and then they bottle it up for you and send it on to the grocery store. Would you drink a glass of milk out of that? No way. But that's a filter in a processing plant. You know, T. Colin Campbell, who is a world-renowned PhD uh, doctor of microbiology and nutrition and things like that, um, in his book, The China Study, he says that casein is the most relevant cancer promoter ever discovered, and that is a protein in milk. All milk from animals, okay? Especially cow's milk. Now remember, cow's milk is for baby cows, right? But this guy says, nah, it's for us. <laughs> Why not cut out the middleman and go straight for the source, right? And this kid says, nah, it's delicious. You know, in the Philippines, they have a brand of milk called Bear's Brand. That's the most famous, the most widely drank milk in the Philippines. It's made by Nestle. They call it Bear Brand. 
they don't call it Nestle. They call it, although Nestle is the company that produces it and packages it, but it's called Bear Brand. And I tell the Filipinos, Bear Brand is for baby bears. <laughs> and mommy's milk is only for babies. Have you ever seen a 30 or 40 year old man go, Mommy? It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's funny too, isn't it? Look at those bears, aren't they cute? Those who have received instruction regarding the evils of the use of flesh foods, tea and coffee, and rich and unhealthful food preparations, and who are determined to make a covenant with God by sacrifice, will not continue to indulge their appetite for food that they know to be unhealthful. Councils and Diet and Foods, page 36. By the way, how many of you read Councils and Diet and Foods? Good, praise God. Okay, those of us who haven't, I would encourage you to do that. If you don't have the book, I'm sure you have one of these, right? Download the EGW app on the internet. Ellen G. White. And you'll find the book there. It'll save you a million dollars if you get cancer. By the way, each cancer patient, if they go through all the treatments that the medical establishment offers, it runs up to about a million dollars in medical bills. It'll save you a million bucks. All right. God demands that the appetites be cleansed and that self-denial be practiced in regard to those things which are not good. This is a work that will have to be done before his people can stand before him a perfected people. Think about that. Isn't that the goal of the Christian? Before probation closes and Jesus says, It is done. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And it's too late to change or repent or confess. It's over. Probation will close. And we need to become perfect in Christ and get rid of all the defects of character before Jesus comes, before probation closes. And in order to do that, we must practice the health message that God in mercy has given to this church to give to the world. It's not just for us. How about those people out there? We have the answers. Oh, you got diabetes? Okay, this is what you're going to do. You got high blood pressure? This is what you're going to do. Right? You have... CV-19, this is what you're going to do. We have the answer for that too. What is disease? By the way, I'm, I'm done with the introduction. Is, are we okay? <laughs> Bear with me. I'm, I'm going to give you a shortened version, okay? I'm not going to keep you here all, all day. I, I, let me know if you get tired. If, you know, anyways. And if you have to leave, I'm not offended. You know, I know people have to go home. It's been a long week. Praise God for the Sabbath, right? What is disease? Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. In case of sickness, the cause should be ascertained. Unhealthful conditions should be changed, wrong habits corrected. Then, what are we supposed to do? Then nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. Ministry of Healing, page 127. How many of you have read or have Ministry of Healing? Praise God. The majority. Praise the Lord. Great book. Then, oh, there's, I don't know why that's doubled. Okay. So, when we get sick, we need to find out what caused the problem uh, we need to change our habits and our ways, and then we need to assist the body to expel impurities. What does that mean? That's called cleansing. We need to cleanse the body. In fact, cleansing is a biblical principle. 2 Corinthians 7.1, Paul says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So cleansing is a biblical principle. I don't recommend green tea, although that's just a picture, but green tea has caffeine. I don't recommend drinking that, but you get the point. Those are herbal things that can help in some ways. Now, fasting, how many of you have heard of Bragg's liquid aminos, Bragg's apple cider, right? Okay. Now, Paul Bragg was a health crusader back in the 50s, and, and this guy, he was a, a, a colleague of Jack LaLanne. You've heard of Jack LaLanne, right? The guy, I used to watch him when I was a kid on TV, you know, doing the jumping jacks and stuff. Anyways, so he wrote a book called The Miracle of Fasting. 
And in his book on page 177, he says, The fasting is mentioned 74 times in the Bible. Fasting puts the body in a condition where all the vital force of the body is used to flush out the causes of body miseries. And then he says, oh, I'm sorry, got doubled. Okay, so what we do in our lifestyle center is we put people on what's called a juice fast, okay? We, we juice carrot apples, and we juice uh, carrot apple with celery. We use juicing machines. This is a basic, simple machine that many people buy on the market here in the United States and even in other countries. It basically is a machine that is called a pulp ejector, a juice extractor, a juicing machine. There's different words for it. Same thing. And what it does is it separates the juice from the pulp. Okay? So the whole idea of fasting is you want to shut down the digestive system and just only absorb nutrients, or if you're doing water fasting, which is a whole different thing. Allow the body to start working on the issues that are going on. High blood pressure, diabetes, whatever. Okay? Rheumatoid arthritis, etc. Okay. So, we juice veggies and fruits and more on veggies. The fruits are too sweet. It's just to make the veggies taste good because they don't taste that great when you juice uh, <clears throat> just like celery and parsley and maybe some broccoli or, uh, you know, they don't really taste that good. It's kind of bitter and ah. But if you put apple in it and some pineapple, it tastes great. Wow, this is good. And you have all the nutrients concentrated up in that juice, and it can nourish the body and be readily absorbed in minutes without going through that grinding process like when we eat food, like what we did this afternoon, right? Okay, so there are different kinds of juices, red juices, orange juices, the green juices, which are the leafy greens. They are the most powerful and beneficial for the diabetics. And uh, so when we get somebody that's on diabetes, we put them on green juices. We don't give them, we do give them carrot apple juice, but I dilute it half and half with water because it's too sweet. Their blood sugar will go up because carrots are, when you juice them, they're very sweet. And if you add apple, it's even more sweet. But if you dilute it half and half, the blood sugar doesn't go up very much at all. So it's fine. Um, but we give them more on green juices to rejuvenate the pancreas, uh, to increase... Um, the uh, insulin sensitivity, and all of that. <clears throat> and so we do different kinds of juices. There's the green juices. You can even add lemon to it. We do not recommend juicing pure fruit because it's way too sweet and it's too hard on the pancreas, which has to produce a lot more insulin to bring that blood sugar down. Okay? So we add the fruit to taste for the taste only. Although there's nutrients in the fruits too, of course. All right. So what are the health benefits of fasting? The University of Southern California came out with a study. Some scientists there discovered that fasting for three days can have a significant improvement in your body's health. The six-month study was done bo uh, on both mice and humans who are currently going through chemotherapy, and they noticed a significant improvement in their health as the white blood cells and other toxins in the body were, there's that same word, flushed out, and Ellen White used the word expel impurities, same thing, flush out, expel impurities, right? To cleanse. And they, they were flushed out over the course of the fast. Basically, when you fast for a prolonged amount of time, your body uses the stored glucose, fats, and produce ketone bodies that are especially good for your brain to keep you going and you flush out anything that your body doesn't need like damaged cells and toxins. When you're eating regularly harmful toxins in the body can attach themselves to these fats and live on. But when you fast, your body is forced to lighten itself. It's like the survival of the fittest, only the strong survive. Now let me ask you a question. When you get a fever, do you want to eat? No, you're like, I don't want to eat. What do you want? You want like a hot soup? Just liquid, right? But you don't want to eat food. Why? Because the brain tells the body, hey, we got some serious problems there. Uh, let's shut down the digestive system for now. Shut off the hunger sensitivity or, or whatever they call it in medical. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know what you call it. But basically shut down the desire for food and let's go on a fast. What do dogs and cats do when they're sick? They stop eating and they go out and eat what? Grass, chlorophyll, the greens. We're going to talk about that. The greens. Who told them to eat grass? God did. P. 
pKa is the key gene that needs to shut down in order for these stem cells to switch into a regenerative mode. It gives the okay for stem cells to go ahead and begin proliferating and rebuild the entire system, explain Longo, noting the potential of clinical applications that mimic the effects of prolonged fasting to rejuvenate the immune system. And the good news is that the body got rid of the parts of the system that might be damaged or old, the inefficient parts during the fasting. Now, if you start with a system heavily damaged by chemotherapy or aging, Fasting cycles can generate literally a new immune system. And what is, the, what is the only thing that can heal you in your body? We know God works through the immune system, which he put into this body, right? David says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God created the body to heal itself if you give it the right conditions, right? What does fasting do? It gives the digestive system a rest. It can help you to beat addictions. It helped me. When I changed my diet, it really helped. And toxins were coming out and unbelievable. It's a great way to start a healthy diet. It normalizes insulin sensitivity. It can reduce your hunger levels, promotes the detoxification process, whitens the eyes, clears the complexion, reduces high blood pressure, boosts the immune system. We take people that are diabetic, that are on insulin, that are on high blood pressure medications, cholesterol lowering drugs, and in days, their blood pressure is normal. Sometimes on the first or second day, the blood pressure is normal. Sometimes on the second or third day, the blood sugar is normal with less insulin, and by the end of 10 days, they're off all insulin, and they're no longer diabetic. We've seen this for year after year after year in treating people. I'm sorry, type two, yes, type two. Now type one can be helped, but we're not saying that you can get off all insulin with type one, that's a whole different situation. So thank you for clarifying that. This man, Dr. Joel Furman, how many of you have heard of him? Okay, he has videos on YouTube. Uh, he's got a lot of good information. I learned a lot from this man. He's amazing. He's way ahead of the other doctors. And he wrote a book. He wrote a number of books, actually. A few of them. And I've got this book, Fasting and Eating for Health. And he says, while medical treatments aim at reducing the symptoms and may address some discrete areas of disease, they do little or nothing to remove the underlying illness or stop its progression to an untimely death. On the other hand, fasting treats the entire body. In addition to aggressive dietary changes, and in the context of this statement, he's talking about a plant-based diet, vegan diet. He says, a physician-supervised fast can be utilized to bring a patient to a new level of cardiac safety, fasting in conjunction with optimal nutrition before and after the fast offers the ability to undo the damage done to the body by the rich diets of modern societies. Through therapeutic fasting, a patient is able to reverse a cardiac condition quickly without the need for invasive medical procedures. What is he talking about? Angioplasty, bypass surgery, stents, okay? Those are invasive medical procedures. The results I have seen in patients using this approach has been spectacular. Fasting allows the body actually to remove the plaque. Remember that big fat plaque that they pulled out of that man's artery in the video? It allows the body to remove the plaque from within the blood vessels and to heal itself in the shortest amount of time. Now, there are some institutions run by Seventh-day Adventists that that give dietary changes, but don't necessarily do fasting. And people do heal from heart disease and diabetes, but it takes longer. It takes months and sometimes longer. But if you do fasting, it's in days. The healing takes place in days. That's what he's saying here. A plant-based diet in conjunction with a properly conducted fast most often leads to a total recovery or a vast improvement in hypertension and angina. Now, what does the spirit of prophecy say? Does the spirit of prophecy, does God agree with all this? Let us read. In many cases of sickness, the very best remedy is for the patient to fast for a meal or two. We call that intermittent fasting. Maybe you'll skip breakfast and lunch, or you might skip lunch and dinner, or maybe just dinner. And you allow your body a more than 12-hour period of fasting. 
because you're not eating, right? That's called intermittent fasting. And this is what Ellen White is saying here, is that intermittent fasting is, is, is good in some cases, right? That the overworked organs of digestion may have an opportunity to rest. Number two type of fasting that Ellen White advocates in her writings, a fruit diet for a few days has often brought great relief to brain workers. So that's another kind of fasting. Only fruits for a few days, nothing but fruits. You know, no breads, no rice, no potatoes, no cooked foods, just fruits. Okay, number three, many times a short period of entire abstinence from food, this is what we do in our lifestyle center, only juices or water in extreme cases. Followed by simple, moderate eating. We do a four-day juice fast, and you eat raw food for one day. And then you go back on another four-day juice fast, and then you eat raw food for another day. That's 10 days. Followed by simple, moderate eating has led to recovery through nature's own recuperative effort. Wow. Powerful. So the medical doctors, a hundred something years later, are catching up with what God told us a hundred something years ago. But how many of us, or how shall I say, how many of our institutions follow this and teach this and practice this? And I'm not trying to be negative, but let's face the, the facts that God has instructed us to do it this way, but we do it like everybody else. Because there's no money in fasting. There's no money in curing these diseases. Now, I'm not saying that's the motive of other people, but let's face it, we sell as many drugs as all the other institutions. Sad. All right, so uh, let me skip this, because this is like really long. Let me skip through this. Okay, so we do a cleanse. All right, so I'm going to ask my wife to come up and share with us, and she's going to finish up uh, some of this. My love, come on now. My wife is a speaker. Come on, honey. Can you share? I like to include her because we work together. And she can do this. And go ahead. You know the slides. Here. Here you go. I'll pray for you. <laughs> no, I'm not going to leave. I'll stand up here with you. Go ahead. Okay, so... In order for us to cleanse our bodies, we have to increase elimination in all the five eliminating organs of our bodies. And that's what, right, before that. Oh, yeah. So, there yeah. you go. Yeah. So, our organs of elimination will be the skin, the liver, the kidneys, the lungs, the colon. So, during the cleanse or the detox, detox program that we do, we open up all of this. The skin, the liver, the kidneys, and the lungs. And also the colon. The skin, we put them in a steam bath so they will sweat out all the toxins. Right. The liver, we do a liver flush. The kidneys, they'll be drinking a lot of water, a lot of teas, a lot of juices. So they're constantly going to the bathroom, right. um, peeing. The lungs, they're required to do walks and exercise. And deep breathing and deep in the breathing. country. In and the then the colon, we do the uh, colon flashing the very first thing in the morning. So if we want to eliminate all the toxins from our bodies, then that's the first thing we need to do is open up all of this and start uh, eliminating. So just like that picture That's there. just a picture. We don't do what's called the master cleanse. It's just yeah. showing what happens before and after. You notice the, um, the, the mountains that are formed there. And then later on, there's no more mountains, right? Yeah, isn't that amazing? There's actually a saying that I always mention when we do this and we educate people. I say, and um, make this as a rule. The bigger the waistline, the shorter the lifeline. Yeah. So let us not allow our waistline to get bigger. In fact, let's get trimmer. Exercise. And not only diet, but exercise. Very yeah. important. Yeah, we got to exercise. Walking is the best exercise. So that's another picture right there. So the healthy colon looks like that on the left. It should be healthy. Everything is moving fine. You're supposed to be eliminating fine. But if it's unhealthy colon, it will be at the right picture there. So, so I got a question. How many times a day should you be moving your bowels? It should be every time we eat, we should move our bowels. That's the healthy. Do you know most people move their bowel once a day 
or once every two or three days, and some people only once, really once sick week. people once a week. Yes. We've met some of them when we do medical missions in the Philippines. And they're really sick. So anyways, yeah. So colon cleansing is very important. Like I said, that opens up like elimination. Um, juice fasting and cleansing the colon opens the way for the body to heal. And to clean the colon, you can use an enema bag. Um, oh, can which, I, yes, go ahead. Can I back up real quick? Because I don't want to miss this. This is a picture yes. of a diabetic in late stage diabetes. They have neuropathy already. There's open ulcers and pus is oozing out of these open sores in the, in the legs, the lower extremities, because the person is not moving their bowel. So the body opens up the skin and creates another bowel. I got to get this stuff out. It's killing us. And so, so on day one, you got these open lesions and, and everything. And then on day number four of juice fasting and cleaning the colon, you see tissue restoration. And on day number seven, complete restoration. Just by fasting and cleaning out the colon, cleaning out the sewer. Okay? So go ahead, honey. Yep, and how do we do that? Go ahead. We can do it through um, enema. We have actually lost this knowledge now in our society but years and years ago from the older people here they know what an enema bag is yep. nowadays you ask people what are, what is an enema bag and they don't know right. and you go to the gro uh, grocery store to the drugs drug stores they don't have it yeah. it's so Sometimes hard to find yeah. yeah it's so hard to find one now her mom wanted one and i went to i went to i went to several <laughs> right drug stores and they didn't have any they had these little with the you know, it's just like this little bulb, yes. you know, I'm like, that's not an anima bag. That's yes. not what we need, you know, and they didn't have them. You have to order them online. I was like, wow, that's not good. Anyways. Okay, yeah. Go so our society is making it hard for us to be healthy now. It's, it's, it's making us unhealthy. Yeah. Um, you can also do a colonic board and um, there are people that have, that acquire or buy their own colonic board. You can also go to a colonic cleansing place there's some places colonic clinic yeah. co colonic clinics although they can be very expensive right. um, we have our own colonic board in the Philippines uh, that we use and um, yeah it goes over the toilet yes. so rather than getting up and down yeah, up, and, up down, and down you just lay there and everything comes out <laughs> and then you put water back in and it goes out and ultimately if you're doing a real colonic you have a five gallon bucket of water lukewarm and it, it just flows in and then stuff comes out, it goes in, it's just a washing process and you go through five gallons. But because there's, in the Philippines, it's like really hard, you know, we're doing sometimes in different places and you, you can't, I mean, where are you going to put the thing, you know? So I figured we'll just do the enema. And, but we have a, another way that we use, but we won't talk about that in this lecture. But yes, cleaning the colon, very important. So okay? if you go to uh, colonic clinics, then it's more... Um, uh, they have the machine and you just see it going through yeah there's a tube and they light it up it's like a fluorescent <laughs> bulb you know and they want you to see the What's parasites and the, and the worms and stuff coming out and you're like wow and, and people are like wow you know because they want you to feel like you got your money's worth which you do right <laughs> but they want it they want yes. you to see what's coming out you know yeah yeah so you can, can do be it pretty horrifying way. at times but anyways go ahead okay but like we're teaching this in the Philippines and in remote places, so we have to be very basic. Right. Um, so we're going to show you some slides of some people that um, the Lord brought to us to help them with their health issues and health problems. This is Brother Sam Patalinghog, and he's one of the elders in the Philippines in the Das Marinas Cavite, which is the Central Luzon Conference um, in, the, in Manila. And he came to us with advanced rheumatoid arthritis. And he, had, he also had a lung infection. And he was in ex excruciating body pain. Three years before he called us, we, had that, uh, we did a seminar at their church because he wanted us to do this health seminar, the whole day seminar. And at the end of the seminar, we did a food demo. We usually do a food demo actually at the end of it, every seminar that we do, whether it's church or it's the government buildings or government offices or school or even evangelistic series where we do health lectures. We do a food demo at every meeting. Always. Because you know why? 
it needs to be reinforced by people seeing what can be eaten and tasting what can be eaten. And because we humans are to see is to believe, to taste is to believe. So if they see the food and they see that it tastes good, and they taste that it's good, then they will be convinced and they will be encouraged to change their lifestyle. Yeah, so, and if I may interject, and if they drink that green smoothie, that yes. green liquid in the glass, they're like, ew, that looks, oh, you got to drink that? And when they taste it, like, man, it's good. It tastes delicious. You know, we do smoothies, but we add spinach, lettuce, kale, kale and we blend it lettuce. up with the fruits and the coconut water or whatever juice you want to use. Yeah, so. Anyway. Yeah, so. We did this seminar at his church three years before, and he said he was excited, he did it for a little bit, but then after that he went back and even worse into, his, into a bad lifestyle, so three years later he was really sick. And the first thing he told us was, Had I listened to you when you came the first time, I wouldn't be a patient in your center today. That's what he said. Had I, li had I only listened. I wouldn't be here as a patient today. So he was so bad off that no painkillers was affecting. He was maxed out on pain yeah. medications, maximum dosage. And his, this man is an office worker and he's, he's the breadwinner. You know, jobs are scarce in the Philippines, very difficult, very impoverished country. So he couldn't even type. His fingers were so crippled with arthritis and he's, he's just always in pain. He couldn't sleep. So he can't even hardly walk he now. Hardly he can't walk. drive anymore. Yeah, so. he can't even drive his vehicle. Too painful just to move his, you know, arms. So, so we did the three-day juice fast and then one day a raw, and he improved some, but still a lot of but pain. But still a lot of pain. I said, I prayed. I said, Lord, we usually get amazing results in just three days. What do I do now? And the Lord said, put him on water fasting. I've done water fasting. I did a one-week water fast, a four-day water fast. Larry and his wife did a, what was it, 12-day water fast. They've experienced it. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. It will give you energy like you wouldn't believe. But it needs, if it's that long, it needs to be under the supervision of a doctor. And that's what they did. There's a clinic up north that this doctor is world-renowned for water fasting. And anyways, they went there. But yeah. yeah, I do short water fasts with people if necessary. So we put them on four days of water fasting. At the end of the four days water fast, all the pain in his body was gone except for the pain in his shoulder and his arm. And... And with a follow-up program, continuing... With coffee enemas that cleans out the liver. I know it sounds weird. Uh, we'll not get into dis discussing that now. But, but anyways, that's one of the ways, the natural ways to heal the liver is through coffee enemas where it's absorbed in the liver. It takes the uh, toxins in the fatty tissues of the liver and flushes them out. And we have had patients with hepatitis B, hepatitis A, be completely healed doing a 10-day cleanse, and then following up with continuous coffee enemas, maybe three times a week, changing their diet, living a health lifestyle, and within a month, all signs of hepatitis was gone yep. after a medical testing was performed. Yes. So I can re you can get rid of hepatitis if you do the program. So, you know, we've been told a lot, oh, you can't heal this, you can't, no, God can heal anything. All right. Okay, and this man also has severe arthritis. I think it'll play the music again. Okay, good afternoon. We're okay, here we with uh, Kuya Mario. Uh, he went through our 10-day uh, cleanse program. Actually, he was at our place for 12 days. And he had an uh, extreme case of uh, rheumatoid arthritis, although <laughs> he's not completely recovered, but maraming improvement. Ano? So, dati, hindi pwede umakyat yung kamay. Taas, taas. Before he cannot lift his hands. You, sige. Oh, yung, yung isa. Oh, ito, ito, ito. Yo, boxing pa. Oh, yeah, ito. Kaya ba? Oh, oh yung dalawa, dalawa. Sige. Oh, now he can lift both his arms. At saka, pwede nakalakad na yung ano? Ayutay-utay. Okay, so, yeah, he can walk a little bit and uh, he's doing much better. Yung asawa niya, si ati Mel Melda, no? Melinda. Mel Melinda. Uh, my high blood, I know, when you came to our place, diba? Mm -hmm. At saka my gamot, ano, mm -hmm. for high blood. Mm -hmm. She's taking maintenance medication for high blood pressure every day. Ngayon, 
Ikaw pagsunod yung diet niya. Kasi para isang, ano? isang kasi is pa, kain. She's following his yeah, diet. Yeah, kasi siya sumunod, she's following his diet, which is the vegan vegetarian Genesis 129 diet. And uh, ano nangyari sa'yo? Hindi na po unahin ang naggamot. Oh, you see? I'm not drinking my medicine anymore, she says. Yeah, it's it's one month already, and she's not taking any more medication because the high blood pressure is gone because she changed her diet with Kuya Mario. So nayong yung kayo ay mayaman sa kalusugan ano? They are rich in health. Praise the Lord. So this is the update. Masaya kayo Kuya. Oh, he's very happy. So praise the Lord. Okay, so that's our update. Really exciting. If you practice the laws of health. You will be blessed with health and strength and long life, and you'll be very happy. Praise the Lord. Salamat pa. Okay, so let me... <clears throat> so this lady, you want to tell about her? Yeah. Go ahead. This lady came to us She's with... She's a friend of ours now. Yeah. She had gallstones. She was working in Singapore, and she kept on having these stomach pains, and they found out she had gallstones. And then we just... We can just read her testimony which she posted on Facebook. I just took, I just copied it. And, yes. Yeah. And so she says she was thanking us here for the warm accommodation during my 10-day detox and cleansing program at your home in Louisiana, Laguna. I can still remember the feeling of the cold breeze and the fresh air. I have been suffering from stomach pain for four years on and off. But it became worse when I came back to Philippines. I went for ultrasound and found that my gallstones were grown bigger compared to last year. I cannot take the pain anymore as it worsened day by day. My doctor recommended to remove the stones by operation, but my father advice, advised me to go for natural option. Her father was, was a Seventh-day Adventist. Through Pastor Rudel, now he was the pastor in our district at that time, he introduced this lovely couple who serves in healing ministry at their local church, Adventist Church in Louisiana. I never felt like a stranger to them. Every day, they prepare fresh fruit and vegetable juices. Sounds you, but they made it so yummy for me. I never felt hungry as I was stuffed with glasses of juice almost every half an hour. They called it juice fast. This helps to, re to rest the digestive system and let the body absorb the nutrients faster. I feel energized and my body eventually feels lighter. I lost one to two pounds a day. My skin becomes clearer and tighter too. My gallstones came out naturally through pooping on the fourth and ninth day. There, they were many than I expected. It felt great and I feel better thereafter. I've learned that whatever we put into our mouth really plays a big part on our health. Eating more fresh veggies and fruits helps to lower bad cholesterol, cholesterol, eliminates toxins, and improve digestion too. And then she quoted this verse in the Bible. Ezekiel 47, 12, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. And then she says, the Lord impressed me to read Daniel chapter 1. She's I was not. praying for this lady. I know she's not in the Seventh-day Adventist because her dad told me, oh, you know, and the pastor told me, she's not an Adventist. So I said, okay, it's okay. So she came. They're Pentecostals. They call them born again in the Philippines. Pentecostals. And um, at this time, the Lord impressed me. Don't say anything to her about religion or anything because you, know, you don't know where she's at. So I said, okay. So we talked about health. And, and I was praying. We did a lot of praying for her. And the Holy Spirit told her, you need to read Daniel chapter 1. And she read it. This is what she says. Where they fasted for 10 days with only vegetables and water. And they appeared better and fatter in flesh than other young men. They were 10 times better in all matters of wisdom and understanding. This encouraged me more to pursue and remain focused until the 10th day. I praise the Lord for restoring my health and blessing me with the nicest people around and thanked him for using his, pe his people as a channel of education, awareness, and natural healing. What did God call our church to do? A the ministry of Jesus Christ. What did, what, what did Jesus spend more time doing? Preaching or healing? Healing. This is the work of the church. This is the right arm of the gospel. Ellen White says the medical missionary work is the right arm that opens the door, meaning opens the heart and the mind 
for the entrance of the first, the second, and the third angel's messages, the message for these last days. And what did we do? We cut the arm off, and then we do it just like everybody else is doing it. And even in our church, we're in the same condition as the people who don't even know these things. I'm not trying to be condemnatory at all. I'm just saying this is the sad reality that we find ourselves in. So, as you mentioned, Sarah, that a channel of education, awareness, and natural that's healing. Right. So that's what we need to be. Yes. And that's what we want to be. Amen. And that's what we endeavor to be. Amen. And that's what we want God to help us that's to right. be. So um, at this, um, right about the end, at the end of the 10 days, James was asking more about, you know, we got to know her more and we found out that she doesn't have a child. He said, how long have you been married? He said, well, total, been together, total of seven years. And you don't have a child? He said, no. Wow. And James said, what did I you say? I told him, well, when your body is clean, you can have children. I believe after this program, the Lord is going to give you a baby. I said, she oh, said, yeah? Really? <laughs> she said, oh, pray for me. I said, now, if you don't conceive after this program, you know, within a few months, then you bring your husband here, then he's probably the problem, and maybe he needs some, you know, <laughs> some detox, which is true. Maybe the sperm isn't healthy. We don't know, you know. We don't know. And she said, okay. And with but guess what? Exactly one month after she left our place, she got pregnant. And they have now, um, how old is she now? I think, I think he's, he's about four or five Three years. or four, four, maybe about four. I think he's four, four years old now. He's four years old now. Yeah, they have a baby boy. They have a baby boy, Jet. Yeah. Um, Jet. Of course, this is a very old picture. He's, he's, he's four, four now, he's running around, and yeah, they just love him. And he's then, kid. it didn't end there. So that time, we didn't share anything with her. We didn't share the, any, the Lord said, don't share. Because her dad's preaching to her all the time, and she's like, mm, you know. And so I, the Lord said, don't say anything. She's not ready. I mean, that was the thoughts that came to me. I mean, maybe. But anyways. But she's a very spiritual person, and she loves the Lord. And, and we the talked Bible. about health, and I didn't get into, like, the Sabbath and the state of the dead. And I didn't talk about all those somewhat controversial topics in many ways. And so uh, we talked about health, and she just absorbed everything. She said, wow, this is amazing. And I just said, Lord, I'll just leave her with you. And so a couple years later, she comes two, back. Yeah, two years later, in the, mid, in the midst of lockdown, she calls us and she wants to come back. She's starting to have some stomach problems again. Yeah. So, you know, she's eating some fried stuff and, yeah. you know, some oily stuff. Some, gallbladder's getting irritated and inflamed. And she said, I want to come back. But this time she brought her friend and her husband with and they're, her. And, they're, and the two ladies are leaders in the Pentecostal church. They're group leaders. They're, they're the ones giving the Bible studies, you know, 20, 30 people or whatever. And so um, I prayed. I said, Lord, you know, I always pray. I, I don't start sharing gospel truth with people until about the third day of fasting. When the mind is clear and the Holy Spirit can really, you know, reach their innermost being in a more powerful way. And so... I think it was the third day of fasting. I said, oh, so we're going to have a health lecture now. Said, okay. So they gathered around. And I said, but we're going to talk about it from a biblical standpoint. Because I knew they're Bible readers, right? And they actually brought their Bibles with them because they were going to teach, they were going to share with me and my wife the gospel. Yeah. That's you know, what they, they told us was, that later. They told us later, you know. And we were all laughing about it. I said, oh, praise the Lord. But anyways, so they, they're Bible readers. These are spiritual people. They really love the Lord. And, you know, they're following the light that they have. And. And everything, so so I started sharing. Actually, it was actually a blessing that they were able to do this cleanse because this is the middle of pandemic. There is supposed to be nobody <clears throat> going into our town or going out. And so we smuggled them onto the property. Because we're at the outskirts of Because I know, I know the back way to do things. <laughs> so we smuggled them into the property and into the barangay. And they did the cleanse in the midst of construction. So that's <laughs> why the house is a mess and everything. Right. But it, we don't care. We're going to come anyways. So come on, let's do it. So, so I'm sharing health. And they're like, wait, 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 where is that? And they're writing down all the text. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's, we're going to get our Bible. So they got their Bibles. And now we have a Bible study. But we're not talking about controversial subjects. Because they'll say, oh, that's enough. You know? And so I just shared 
you know, the body is a temple of God. We talked about diet in the Bible and the different kinds of diet and the time periods that they applied to and this and that. And, and they were like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And then the Lord said, now you can share a little bit more. So we talked about grace and, and the law a little bit, you know. And they were like, oh, uh, but wait a minute. It, it, we're not under the law. We're under grace. I said, but did you ever read the next verse? Oh, where is that? Oh, let's turn to Romans 6. And then we started this discussion about the Ten Commandments. And they were like, oh, well, but wait. And the one lady said, the lady with the glasses there in the middle, Malu, she says, but this is really hard to accept. I, this is... And I said, well, let me ask you a question. Is it in the Word of God or not? Yeah, I just read it. I said, so who are you going to follow, the Bible or the church or the pastor? No, we have to follow the Bible. But, but I said, oh, okay, let's go over it again. So we slowly went through the text and, and we shared. And, and they were like, wow. And then and it was kind of getting late because it was in the evening after they'd done all their treatments and everything. And, you know, the juicing and the coffee enemas and the steam bath and all of that. And they said, oh, we want more. I said, look, let's, let's postpone it because it's getting late. We need to get some rest. I said, let's do it tomorrow evening after you do all your things. So now, what did they do? They were staying in our house because the other guest house weren't, they were still under construction, not ready, right? So we sleep upstairs. They're sleeping downstairs. They stayed up till 2 o'clock in the morning reviewing all the Bible texts that we gave them. They're hungry. They're like, wow, we never heard that. And they were talking. And, of course, I didn't know. I was so sleepy. I was, I was out. And they said that night it was a revelation. That's what they call it. It was a revelation. Because they opened their Bibles. They prayed and they opened the Bible and they, and they compared verses and they were like, wow. Anyways. So a few days later, it was a Sabbath and we had a Sabbath um, worship yeah. right there in our, um, in our place there. And they gave a testimony. They said, we are convinced and we are converted. The and they Sabbath, were talking about the Sabbath, the state yeah. of that, because as we progressed every day, we had Bible studies all the way up until, you know, Your tenth day. Like, it was like the seventh day that we had already studied the Bible for like five days in a row, and it was like almost two hours each time because they were ready. They're 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 ready to absorb all this, you know, truth that God has given us, and they were so excited, and they said, "Wow, we never heard anything like this." I said, "Well, it's all in the scriptures." How come our pastors never teach that? Okay, so we studied about false prophets, false teachers, and what the Bible says. And they were like, wow. So it was just exciting for them and for us. When they left, we continued online Bible studies every week with them. We're, we'll be done in just a few minutes. So we're winding up. I know it's been a long time. Um, so, yeah. So we continued online studies once a week. This is the husband on the bottom right. His name is Billy. Um, that's Malou on the top left. That's her husband. He works in Singapore. Malou is in Philippines. Uh, JM and uh, Hazel are living in Canada now. And uh, Malou and her family were all baptized, her and her two children. Just recently, yes. Just recently, and the husband went back to the Philippines on a vacation, and he was baptized, and they're all Seventh-day Adventists. What's the point? The point is God gave the right arm, the medical missionary work, including the health message, for us to open the hearts and minds of people, because that's non-controversial. Some Catholic areas, you go, you say, oh yeah, we're here to do Bible study. No. They were warned by the priests and the nuns. Don't listen to those Adventists. They're no good. But you come there, you offer them free medical treatment, and, and you help their physical needs, and they're like, wow, this is amazing. You do health lectures, family seminar, and they're just soaking in, and next thing you know, they become Seventh-day Adventists, Christians. And so, and Malu and her children, they're very active now at the church, leading out and um, sharing also, right. because mm -hmm. they were leaders at their church before. So, okay, so we're going to close now. Um, we want to give you a sample program that you can do at home. Just a few more slides. Yeah, you can take a picture. Or... Yeah, and you can also get this on our on our uh, YouTube channel as well. It's all there. This lecture and, and the whole thing. But anyways, you can do a simple fast at home. You don't need a doctor. If you're on medication, you may want to consult your medical doctor or practitioner. Uh, we don't recommend and we don't encourage people to just stop taking your medications. That can end up in a serious problem and you may die. So what we do is we take people step by step. So you can do a simple three-day fast in your home. So you do like a carrot, a juice, a carrot apple juice combination. The green juices would, juices would be like romaine lettuce, cucumber, celery, green leaf lettuce, and some unripe pineapple in the case of diabetics. 
We don't give the carrot apple juice unless it's di diluted half and half for diabetics. You need to monitor your blood sugar every hour or two if you're doing a fast. Kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, vegetable juices could be carrot, apple, cucumber, tomato, celery, cilantro, or parsley. And uh, uh, you drink an 8-ounce glass of juice every hour throughout the day while you are on a fast. A lot of people say, oh, I did a fast and I had a, a horrible headache and I felt sleepy and tired and I couldn't do anything. Well, that, I say, well, how much juice did you drink? Two. I said, no wonder why you felt horrible. Your blood sugar went down too low and, and you're detoxing. You know, you're not giving your body enough nutrients to kind of break into a deep detox. So you need to drink juice every hour. You drink water and herb teas in between the juices. And after each day of fasting, you take an enema with lukewarm water in the morning to cleanse and detoxify the colon. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Because when you're fasting, all of those dead cells and toxins are deposited into the colon and they must be flushed out. Otherwise, they're reabsorbed back into the liver, back into the bloodstream, and you're just auto-intoxicating yourself. Okay? So you need to do an enema. Very important. Yes? Can you use what? Oh, yeah, the one with the, the bulb and the... No, no, that's, that's not going to totally evacuate your bowel. No. That'll evacuate only what's in the lower section of the colon, but it won't get up higher in into the mid and upper section of the intestine. So, no, you need an enema bag and you need lukewarm water and you need to fill it up to the brim, screw the, screw the uh, thing on. And, yeah, you got to do two to three bags of water to totally evacuate all the, uh, the, the contents of the intestine out. So that's very important. That's a good question. Thank you. All right, so on day number four of a fast, uh, you can eat fresh ripe fruits, preferably juicy fruits like watermelon, melon, papaya, mango, whatever's in season. Uh, you can have a little bit of oatmeal along with the fruits. Uh, yeah, we, don't, we soak the oatmeal. We soak the oatmeal yeah. overnight in, in uh, pineapple juice. Pineapple juice or it's very some, good. some milk. Yeah. And people say, oh, or but that's chia, raw oatmeal. Can... Well, when they process the oatmeal, it goes through a heated process. It's actually almost cooked. I mean, it's... And, and it's easy to digest. It's, it's not going to do any damage to you or anything. It's really good. Okay. And then in the afternoon for lunch, you can eat a large raw salad. It could be kale, lettuce, cucumber, tomato with some onion, lemon, salt, olive oil. We do not recommend oils for heart disease patients or diabetics. Um, you know, if you're just looking to do a good detox and... You know, you may have right, rheumatoid arthritis. I almost said Ryuma. You said, what's that? Rheumatoid arthritis. I was thinking in Tagalog there for a second. Um, and so if you have, you know, we might give a little olive oil to some people. Um, and then you can eat veggie sticks, celery, carrots, cucumber. But we recommend a nice large salad. Sorry? Yeah, somebody's taking a Okay, so let me know when you're done taking a, a photograph of that. Okay? All right, in closing, um, there's more testimonies, but we don't have any more time. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time together. We are grateful for the privilege and opportunity to share with our brothers and sisters in Christ this wonderful health message and the amazing things that you're doing through our feeble instrumentality in the Philippines and what you have done in our lives. Father, help us to uh, put into practice the principles that we have learned today together and to minister to those who are suffering, those who are sick, um, to teach them a better way. But help us to put it in practice so that it will have power when we teach and when we share. That they can see the love of God and how God wants us to be free from sickness and suffering because he cares so much about us. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Bless this church. Bless the pastor who's out of town. Uh, bless his ministry. I've heard nothing but good things about his ministry here. Uh, continue to give him long life and health, and bless the elders and leaders of this church, and bless their outreach and their Bible studies and their sharing, and each and every member gathered here today. In Jesus' name we pray.